Hello everyone, today is October 22nd, 2024, and Anthropic, OpenAI's main competitor in the LLM business, has released a new Claude 3.5 sonnet and Claude 3.5 haiku. Now, the biggest news of the day is that they have also released a new feature called computer use. Now, this is available on the Anthropic API, and developers can use Claude to interact with their computer by looking at a screen, moving a cursor, clicking buttons, and typing text. This is very exciting because it was OpenAI, I believe, who came up with the five-step path to AGI, and I believe agents were uh, on that list. I think they were second or third, if I'm mistaken. I think they were third, but maybe I'm wrong here. But the thing is, is that Anthropic seems to have struck first with developing an experimental agent. And so I think this will necessitate a response from OpenAI. But in the meantime, what I wanted to do was try and actually figure out how to, how to use this thing. So hey everyone, I feel like a huge dummy right now. I recorded the whole session of me using Anthropic's computer use but I forgot to turn on my microphone right here. It was not on, so it was completely mute, and I feel really dumb having done all that. And I didn't want to record the whole thing from scratch because I just felt, well, that was my first honest attempt at using it, and I thought that it was just going to be the most authentic, so I'm going to keep it, but I will just commentate on the clip post-recording, so I apologize. I didn't want to have to re-record it all again, and I think now that I've done it, I can actually give you more insightful feedback as to what I was thinking in the moment and what the task was that I gave it to do. So we're just not going to have any sound of me, you know, clicking, clacking on the keyboard and, you know, thinking about my thought process, but I'll do my best to do that here. So what I'm trying to do here actually is I'm trying to just figure out how to install this thing because... I don't have a ton of experience with using these APIs, and so I realized you had to use Docker. So I went to Claude Sonnet 3.5 itself to give me instructions on how to set up the computer use demo, and it was very helpful. I actually was able to, with its help, get this thing up and running on Docker. I already had Docker installed on my computer, and so that uh, was already taken care of. And I, again, I was saying in this video that I was just, I was uh, really grateful to have Claude Sonnet 3.5 walk me through this because I probably would have taken a lot longer than 24 minutes to figure out this entire process. So this is just me watching the Docker container getting loaded. And there was actually an error here. So then I gave it this error message just saying, hey, you know, what's, what's up with this? Uh, there's this port error thing. So I couldn't get it to run. And it gave me some more instructions and then finally it told me computer use demo is ready. So this was the first moment where I was able to start using the Claude Sonnet 3.5 computer use feature. So if we move forward here, this is what the interface looks like here. It says uh, Claude computer use demo. And I'm just trying to figure out what to tell it. So the first task I gave it was to take a screenshot of the Albert Einstein photograph on the Wikipedia page. And it was pretty cool to see this play out. So I'm just gonna slide it along here, but you can see that on the steps on the left-hand side here, they started running the agent. So it's going to Firefox, going to open up Wikipedia here and go to Einstein's page. So you don't actually see it typing per se, at least I don't think, okay, now you do, but it types it really fast, right? Like it just kind of types it in a way that's really quick. And what it does now is that it's going to click open the image of Einstein on the right here. So in a minute, I think it'll do that. Right, so it says here, let me try to zoom in on it for a better view. I'll click on the image to open it in full size. So it is going to do that. So I'm waiting for it patiently here. And you can see the nice running icon right there. So here it is, opened it up. And one thing I found very interesting about it when it did this was that it it actually talks about the photo. It doesn't just take the photo and say it's done. It actually describes what the photo setting was and what Einstein is wearing and his facial expressions. So I found that pretty interesting. I didn't ask it to do that, but it kind of just 
offered its own perspective on the photograph. So that was the first task that I gave it. Now, the second task that I gave it, I think I'm thinking about it right here. Uh, I wanted to integrate the function log of x, natural log of x, on the Wolfram Alpha interface. So yeah, I'm thinking about what to tell it right here. And so I'm going to be typing you know, integrate the function ln of x on Wolfram Alpha. So it says prompt it to integrate, yep, the function ln of x. And I'm kind of disappointed the, the original recording didn't get saved because I even was able to just say at the top of my head what the uh, indefinite integral was. It's x log x minus x plus c or x times quantity log x minus 1 plus c. So anyways, I like integrating that function for some reason. I just love to use that function as like a test function to integrate. So that's why I, I thought of it in the moment. And so then I noticed there's this Firefox, I don't want to say error, but it has to has to come out of this page and it goes right to Wolfram Alpha though. And then it begins to integrate the function or it begins to prompt Wolfram Alpha to integrate that function. So I'm waiting for it here. You can see what the tool it's using is. It, again, it just it types really fast. Like in a, within the blink of an eye, I'm, I'm gonna go back here, but like it just it just happened just so quickly. Like I can't see like right there. Like that one second just I didn't have time to react really and just hits enter immediately. So then it gets the the answer there. X log x minus one plus c. Yeah. So that was the answer. And then the, I believe here it actually runs into an, a mistake or it just keeps running. Like it, I think because I didn't tell it to take a screenshot or something, it just didn't know what to do. Or if it was trying to take a screenshot here, it just took so long. I think I ended up getting frustrated to the point that I ended up hitting this, the stop button up there. So if we, if we just scroll along here, I think, yeah, I hit the stop button right there. So it just leaves the answer uh, right here, which is the right answer. And then the last task that I gave it was kind of an open-ended task. And I, I asked it here, find the best free online resource on Google's first page to help me study statistical physics. So uh, it says, here, be sure to click only on safe websites, take a screenshot of the resources homepage and end. Now I did this because I wanted to give it a fairly open-ended task. I didn't really want to specify a specific page. I just wanted to see how it would do given it has 10 options, right? The Google homepage has 10 options. What would be its best guess of the best site to get statistical physics information? Now, for those of you who don't know, statistical physics was my worst physics subject in both undergraduate and grad school. So it, this was kind of just my own curiosity to know what would be its recommendation for me. And what it came up with was not disappointing at all, actually. It decided to go to MIT Open Courseware. So it looks at the AI overview, and then I think it makes up its mind here as we move along. Notice here, it takes quite some time because it's on the Google homepage now, and I'm scrolling through the times here, but it takes a while. It took like, I don't know, 30 seconds there to come up with the next prompt. It says, I can see that MIT Open Courseware is recommended as the best free resource for studying statistical physics. Let me click on that link and take a screenshot of the course page. So it goes on to the open courseware page and I thought it would just stop here. I actually thought, oh, maybe it'll get confused because it's on the open courseware page, but it, it's not on the statistical mechanics page. But I thought, okay, well, that's probably where it's gonna end. But it actually takes the extra step here and it types in statistical mechanics itself and uh, ends up running into this error. I think I just ran out of my token requests uh, per minute. So I pretty much ended the, uh, the video there after I saw that error. But I was impressed nonetheless that it was able to take the time to, to not just get to the MIT Open Courseware page, but then find the exact page that I wanted to see, right? The statistical mechanics page. So that's where I ended and that's where I shared my thoughts and I'll just do that here as well. So this experience was very interesting because again, I had no experience using the Anthropic API before and I was a little bit hesitant in terms of, will I be able to figure this out? But with Claude Sonnet 3.5's help, I was able to figure it out 
and get the computer use demo running. I still haven't thought of all the potential use cases that I would want to use it for. I'm very curious to see how other people are going to come up with this. Other thoughts I have are that I wondered now, just again, the job situation, if AI agents are powerful enough to successfully fulfill these specific and sometimes even not so specific requests, what jobs are going to get impacted and how will that you know, affect the economy? How will that affect people? How does everything respond to this external driving force of artificial intelligence agents now arriving on the scene? I'm also thinking, what is OpenAI going to do now, now that Anthropic has kind of thrown down the gauntlet and showed their hand of this agent they have been working on? And one of the last things I was thinking about is, this is a little bit scary, right, in terms of having AI agents that can use the computers. It does sound a little bit dystopian or maybe Terminator-like or Age of Ultron-like for me, for those Marvel fans out there. I'm a little bit concerned, but I'm hoping that these companies will be able to red team these things and assess their safety levels and ensure that they are going to be deployed for only positive use cases. I can't, of course, guarantee that or know exactly what they're up to. But nevertheless, those are my thoughts after this uh, first use case of Anthropic's computer use. So thanks for watching. I apologize again for messing up with the audio. I'm just filming on my laptop, which I don't normally do, but I wanted to have my Mac when I was doing all of this API setup and Docker setup. So anyways, I apologize we messed up with the audio. I hope that the video was still informative and that my commentary of the video after the fact was still helpful. So with that, I hope you have a great night and I hope you'll be back for a future video.